This is uh, Team Kawempe National Referral. Uh, we are going to do a demonstration on how to apply and remove the anti-shock gamete for a patient with postpartum hemorrhage. And our patient this morning is NJ, a para 1 plus 0 who sustained PPH due to uterine atony. The team on duty is Dr. Katali Jr., an obstetrician gynecologist, Kawempe National Referral, and Dr. Uh, Luasa Joel uh, to take us through. So usually you would have your anti-shock gamete packed like that uh, after use from the previous patient stored after decontamination like that so you'll find the patient in bed either unconscious or conscious but with unrecordable bps or you know your patient you have uh, chosen needs an anti-shock gamut to help in the management of postpartum hemorrhage so you follow the numbers as you see the team uh, doing uh, on how to apply the patient is unable to move, so you have to do teamwork to ensure that you apply it correctly. So the middle lines uh, represent the spine, and the first dot up there should be at the lower level of the low lowermost rib. Okay, so they have turned the patient on the side. Okay, and then turn back the patient. Our patient is unconscious and unable to move, so we have to apply a log rolling to apply the anti-shock gamut. So we have landmarks. We ensure that the ball that causes uh, aortic compression is at the navel. So we, we check to see that it is at the level of the umbilicus. Okay. And then we start the application. We realize the anti-shock gamut is applied in pairs, segment by segment. Okay. Our patient is a bit short, so we'll fold segment one and then start with segment two at the ankle joint. We can fold segment one. Okay. Into two, like, and then we start applying ensuring that the knee is free so that there's flexibility at the knee joint. Okay, so we apply two like that. And then we test, it should snap so that it is not too tight but also not too loose, okay? We are now applying segment three at the th hip still ensuring that we leave the knee free but also snap to ensure that it is uh, well applied segment four is what you would ideally refer to as a pelvic binder because it brings the two together okay we apply together and also snap good and then we put segment five which is the ball at the level of the umbilicus so segment six should be applied by one person unless you have a really obese patient. Uh, please apply. Okay. Segment six. And we have our anti-shock gamut in place. You can push your hand through to palpate the uterus and see that it is uh, contracted. Okay, you can try to flex the knee and see that if the patient reaches a referral site, they'll be able to do the cervical tear repair. Good. And then we have our oxytocin drip running uh, for the management of atomy. Let's also take our vitals. So we keep this anti-shock gamut in place for at least 12 to 24 hours. And uh, until the cause of bleeding has been addressed, which may be um, cervical tear, and you're referring the patient. So the referral site keeps the anti-shock gamut in place until the cervical tear is repaired and the patient has had stable vitals in terms of blood pressure and pulse rate for at least two hours uh, before you start removing. And also there's no more bleeding and the patient is, is stable.